impairments in Joe Davis County, Illinois. Illinois is reported as being the largest contributor in the Mississippi River Basin to the Gulf of Mexico hypoxic zone. These slides, taken from the Illinois Farm Bureau, were developed for the nutrient reduction strategy. It shows urban runoff is a very small contributor of nitrogen, nitrates, and total phosphorus. Larger contributions occur from point sources, with the largest contributions coming from agricultural inputs. There are 13 streams in Joe Davis County considered impaired. Causes are shown in the center column, while sources of this pollution are shown on the right. Collectively, Analyzing all these causes and sources, agriculture accounts for 23%, urban runoff is identified as 8%, shoreline modifications 4%, sediment resuspension 4%, unknown sources contribute the largest factor 31%, dam or impoundment 4%, channelization 12%, abandoned mines 4%, atmospheric deposition 4%, municipal point source discharge 8%. In 2012, the Joe Davis County Soil and Water Conservation District did an analysis of watersheds in the county. We wanted to look at sources of impairment across jurisdictional boundaries and look at the entire watershed to address the question of what's coming in from out of state and what's taking place directly in our county. This slide shows the individual designations and names for each of the watersheds that we identified in the study. Watersheds with an impaired stream segment were coded in red, while non-impaired watersheds are coded in blue. Then we looked at land use for each of the different categories, impaired versus non-impaired. Some of these boundaries go across state lines as well as across the Mississippi River and incorporate the city of Dubuque. One of the things we noticed is that each of the impaired watersheds contain municipalities, with the exception of the city of Scales Mound. Green stars on this map show registered point source discharges. Land cover for each of the different classifications for impaired watersheds versus non-impaired watersheds were broken out. You can see impaired watersheds have significantly more open water, similar amount of developed open space, Low intensity development was much higher in impaired watersheds, as well as medium and high density development. Looking at this information in another graphic way, the non-impaired watersheds are on the top and the impaired watersheds on the bottom. As we might expect to see, the impaired watersheds have significantly more open water development as well as agricultural uses and wetlands. Part of this information can be skewed because more open water might mean more sampling. This is another map showing the impaired stream segments along with the municipalities. The smaller green triangles show EPA sampling sites. These slides were taken from the EPA's presentation for the TMDL being set for the Galena and Cincinnati watersheds, as well as Frenchers Lake. The water quality standard for dissolved oxygen in reservoirs changes from March through July versus August through February. Total phosphorus is consistent in reservoirs at 0.05 milligrams per liter. The water quality standards for fecal coliform can vary based on different acceptances. Zinc also varies depending on the hardness at the time of the water sampling. This graph shows results for Frenchess Lake. As you can see, dissolved oxygen concentrations periodically fall below the water quality criteria, shown as a horizontal red line.
again for Frenchers Lake. Phosphorus levels were far above the water quality standard shown in, as a red horizontal line. Total suspended solids from Frenchers Lake had 20 samples in 2010. 16 of those 20 failed. This graph shows zinc data for Frenchers Lake with acute standard shown in gold, chronic standard shown in red. You can see how the standard fluctuates based on water hardness with several violations occurring throughout the sampling period. Fecal coliform standards vary based on two different acceptances, one shown here in red, one shown in gold. During the sampling period, six of the 12 samples were high. Total suspended solid concentrations for the Galena River were over the water quality target several occurrences from 1999 to early 2000. Regarding road salt and sodium chloride properties, sodium chloride is not toxic to humans. The chlorine ion has a U.S. secondary drinking water standard of 250 milligrams per liter. Chlorine can be toxic to aquatic life. High salt levels reduce biodiversity, and salt tolerant species can outcompete non salt tolerant species. Lake Michigan reporting data shows a significant trend with increase in chlorine ion levels. However, recall that the water quality criteria is 230 milligrams per liter and 860 milligrams per liter for chronic and acute standards. This graph, although the trend is increasing, does not come anywhere near the water quality criteria. But this is for Lake Michigan. When we look at the chlorine ion and stormwater discharges in the city of Chicago, we can see that the trend is slightly going down throughout the year with the highest expected range being in January, February, and December, or high snowfall months. However, these levels are much more in the acute and chronic ranges. Joe Davis County has a tremendous number of variables which affect the water quality. Projects to improve water quality have been ongoing for a number of years. To make the maximum impact from these projects, a county-wide plan would be beneficial.